Hello again! As usual, this is Becca, going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow when online. And welcome back for another week discussing Linden's scripting language. Again, my apologies for last week. It was just a complete disaster. So I, just, I apologize, though, for falling short and not bringing you your weekly dose of coding goodness. But we're back. We're good to go. And if you notice on my hip, the sheathed code lesson sword. I did tell you before that someday we would be returning to this project where I would teach you how to put sound and animation in it. Neither of these are going to be particularly difficult topics, so you'll excuse me if I wind up diverging into a couple of other facts about these things as we deal with it. So enough of that. On with the show. I will have links in the description that will guide you to where to pick up the base sword and sheathed sword, in case you haven't taken the previous lesson. I will also have links to the actual tutorial videos for that, so if anybody's just jumping on, that'll help you find where to go and you can be completely caught up. Anyway, moving along here. So the freebie for this week is going to be just your basic plywood box of boxiness, just labeled NM and sound for sword. Inside, I will have the animation, which is just called sword, that I threw together with Q Avimator. I am not a great animator. I am sort of a semi-passable one at best. So you know, don't expect you know fluid motion capture sure great stuff here, but I. Hello again! As usual, this is Becca, going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow when online. And welcome back for another week discussing Linden's scripting language. Again, my apologies for last week. It was just a complete disaster. So I, just, I apologize, though, for falling short and not bringing you your weekly dose of coding goodness. But we're back. We're good to go. And if you notice on my hip, the sheathed code lesson sort. I did tell you before that someday we would be returning to this project where I would teach you how to put sound and animation in it. Neither of these are going to be particularly difficult topics, so you'll excuse me if I wind up diverging into a couple of other facts about these things as we deal with it. So enough of that. On with the show. I will have links in the description that will guide you to where to pick up the base sword and sheathed sword. In case you haven't taken the previous lesson, I will also have links to the actual tutorial videos for that. So if anybody's just jumping on, that'll help you find where to go and you can be completely caught up. Anyway, moving along here. So the freebie for this week is going to be just your basic plywood box of boxiness, just labeled NM and sound for sword. Inside, I will have the animation, which is just called sword, that I threw together with Q Avimator. I am not a great animator. I am sort of a semi-passable one at best. So you know, don't expect you know fluid motion capture sure great stuff here, but I... I can tell you a bit about that. I will even leave a link to QAvimator. It's a relatively easy program to learn to use, and I believe they are updating it for the Bento animations for anybody that's up on that. The blade sound, however, I did not actually create. I am not that much of a sound engineer. It's, as you see, created by a Daitenshi Kato. I've had it in my inventory for just this side of forever. I was not able to locate or find this guy or any shop of his on SL. I do have it full permission. I believe it's something he intends to have distributed. If any of you happen to know this guy and can get him in touch with me, um, if I'm wrong, my apologies, and I'll do what I can to make up for it. I'm not trying to distribute stuff that shouldn't be distributed, but it's the only sound effect I, one of the few sound effects I have that I think is actually meant for free distribution. I did search the marketplace and I didn't find anything in the categories I would think to look for, 
for a freebie animation for this, so I did try. So, the first part is going to be the easiest part, just adding the sound. If you've done this before and find your own copy of the, I'm sorry, if you've done this before and you find your old copy of the sword, you can go ahead and grab that. If you're doing this from scratch, I'd recommend going and reviewing those other tutorials until you have it to the point where you have a nice little HUD, you push the button, and the sword goes invisible in your hand, and visible again in your sheath, back and forth. The next thing to do... You'll have them in your box there. I have it here. You drop the blade sound into your sword. Now making sounds go in LSL is remarkably simple. All we're going to do, with, as long as the sound is in the same frame, in this case the root frame, as the script, all you have to do is LL, play sound, in this case blade, and how loud? One is whatever volume the sound clip is at. You can change that if you want it to be quieter. We'll make the sheath quieter. About half as loud. I think I got that backwards. Yep, I did. There we go. I'm a... Now, if you have something where you need a sound to repeat, there is actually a way to do that. Fair warning, I will not leave this running very long because it will be really annoying. Loop sound. So, don't use loop sound unless you mean it. Use play sound. If you were using loop sound, as long as we're talking sound, if you want to loop it for a while and then cut it off, there's the stop sound. You don't actually have to specify which sound when you're stopping the sound, because it will... A given prim is only allowed to play one sound, so there's never going to be a question of which sound to stop, because it's only allowed to play one. If you tried to play another sound while that was looping, it would just stop the loop and play the new sound. So that's how you get sound in there. But we also want to fit in animation. And animation is a little more complicated. Animation, you have to have permission to play the animation. And that you get from LL request permissions, and then you have to specify the type of permission. There are a whole lot of options, including ones that can let somebody take money, take over a script to take money from the account, take over controls, add the object to your avatar, like something can res in the world and then attach itself to your avatar. There are a lot of different things that are able to be done but things that could do harm to the avatar, to the experience of the given player, are usually kept under a permission requirement. So, 
All right, it's actually a request. There's so many things that are get that it is definitely a force of habit. And it's going to have at least two arguments. The first is who you're getting the permissions from. In this case, you want it to be whoever's using the sword. So we do the standard get owner. And then I'm just going to copy right off of the wiki. There will be a nice little link there for you. Permission trigger animation. Now, because it belongs to me and I'm just adding this, sometimes you don't get the permission pop up. But let me just make sure it's not lost in my too many messages. Because sometimes that does happen. And then you will put in. Start animation, sword. Now, unlike sound, what the reason it threw that error is you have to actually specify what animation you're stopping. A given object can start more than one animation. find animation sword. Interesting. What did I name it? It's not a naming problem. I just forgot that I hadn't put it in here yet. Although I didn't capitalize it in the script, so we're gonna change the name there. There we go. Now I've got a nice dramatic pose when I draw the blade. Avast ye villain! I said avast! I have no idea if that's the right thing to say. It just sounded fun. Now another thing I'm going to teach you about animations is animation priorities. There's a lot of different things. If you get into animation, if you actually follow the Q animator or Q avimator link I sent, there's a lot to learn about them. You saw right there when it played, it just went in and back out. In, out. In, out. That's because the actual frames, it's only set up to be about one second long. But that doesn't really help us. You saw before that it stayed in there. That's because we checked the loop when I uploaded it. Now, as you watch this little scroll bar, it just stays. It becomes a static pose. The other things you can set is an ease in. So let's try setting that to two. Leave it on a loop. It won't give me more than one second total, it seems. But you get the idea, though. Is it takes a little bit to get into the pose. You may see a priority up here. From zero to four. What priority does for you with an animation is it helps determine what will override what. If it looks like only part of your animation is taking shape, that other things are overriding parts of it, then you may need want to set it to a higher priority. And then you get things like the hand pose. The particular avatar I've got, the mesh hands are pretty static, but you can set it to be different options. I set it for fist in the one that I sent you, so it will better look like the hand is wrapped around the sword. And you can also get a look at the animation from different perspectives. 
because I didn't really do much with that arm. That arm is being set by the flight animation here. So you actually have a lot that you can do with animation, and to really dive deep into it would actually be a full-length video on its own. So even though this is something of a short one, that's really about all I can go over with that right here. Going over anything more would be a deep dive into how to animate and how all of that works together with different things. And I have some understanding of that. I built custom transformers based on knowing a thing or two about animation. So, but again, I'm not great at it. But there you go. That is how to add sound and animation to your objects. Very useful for any of those weapon animations or dramatic poses or quite a number of other things that you might possibly want to do. So I guess that's it for this week. So thanks for coming back. Again, this has been Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow when online. And I look forward to any comments telling me what about these videos is or isn't working or particular things you would like to know how to program. As usual, I will have these set to upload by noon on Tuesdays at Eastern Standard Time. So until then, good luck, good week, and happy coding! <laughs>